teaching about social media for a while, uh, before about more about Instagram and about, of course, vertical stories on Instagram. And uh, as the current trends is changing and we are all moving to TikTok about TikTok. Uh, I have been doing the, the speech in Budapest, which Maya mentioned on Megaphone, which you guys were so interested in. And um, I will be using the same presentation, but it's updated with all the newest numbers uh, and newest examples. I want to warn you all. Of, uh, I want to warn all of you that uh, all the examples will be about coronavirus. Um, I hope it's not a trigger for anyone. All this information is really, it's really real and checked. And uh, for um, organizations uh, which we can trust, I believe. Uh, but just, uh, I know it's not the greatest time for all of us. But I just wanted to show you that the trend is a trend and. Uh, what you can do with it uh, on TikTok and in vertical storytelling on Instagram and other social media like Snapchat and Facebook. Uh, vertical storytelling, because in my opinion, it's um, uh, it's where the future lays. Yes, uh, it's very simple. Uh, the the reason is very simple. It is because our phones are built like that, and we consume majority of uh, of, our, of we consume majority of information on our mobile phones those days, and that's why vertical is the way to go in my opinion. But Let's start from the, uh, from the, how it all started and how we all, we were thinking about This video didn't have to look this way. It could have been prevented. Say no to vertical videos. Vertical videos happen when you hold your camera the wrong way. Your video will end up looking like crap. <laughs> there are more and more people addicted to making vertical videos every day. It's not crack or nothing, but it's still really bad. There are two different kinds of people who are afflicted with VVS. The first group treats the videos they shoot like pictures. They don't mean any harm. They just don't understand that while you can turn a picture, you can't really turn a video. Uh, the other group is people who don't give a sh Movie screens have always been horizontal. If vertical videos become accepted, movie theaters will have to be tall and skinny. And all the movie theaters would have to get torn down and rebuilt. Skinny them die. Every time a mobile device is used to record video, the temptation is there. Just say no to vertical videos. And if you see someone doing it, say, you're not shooting that right, dummy. <laughs> So yes, those times are behind us. <laughs> those times are behind us and the vertical is the future and uh, a lot of change mainly, as I said, because, uh, uh, because uh, how we consume uh, content those days, mainly on our phones. Uh, but before we go back uh, how uh, to what we're supposed to do with vertical stories, how we're supposed to do it, how we're supposed to do it correctly. Let's talk a little bit about uh, uh, story timeline because it's really important how the social media evolved to understand that there is no going back from this vertical storytelling. So, uh, you know, guys, as you can see uh, on this timeline, the Snapchat uh, started really, really early in 2011. Just it didn't... Uh, it didn't pick up so well uh, because yes, we were in that time of those videos when we were all thinking that vertical is useless because we were all using social media on our computers and uh, it was better uh, to have horizontal videos and horizontal content. Uh, then uh, actually Musical.ly, which is uh, now TikTok, uh, um, started in 2014. And it revolutionized this. Uh, all the young uh, kids uh, were using it, and uh, maybe then uh, social media slowly started to uh, social media experts slowly started to understand that it's a way to go to vertical. So, as you can see, Instagram uh, created this after Snapchat didn't want to sell to them. They created IG stories uh, in 2016. Uh, WhatsApp even uh, gave us an uh, opportunity to, 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 to use uh, vertical stories uh, in 2017. Uh, same as Facebook and even in Messenger, we can do the same as uh, Contact. And even Scape, which I have no idea why and what for, gave us this opportunity to use verticals, uh, vertical forms. And then finally, 
uh, TikTok hit uh, the international markets in 2017 and uh, changed the world and, and changed <laughs> how we uh, how we gonna do social media. Um, YouTube is allowing uh, for that, which I think is a little bit useless, but, but who knows, maybe it's gonna be good for them. And then there is the Firefox TV, this is something new and maybe we will discuss it later a little bit. So let's go back to the question, why, why stories and why vertical? I mean, of course you can be listening to me and oh, there is uh, Maria here telling me I'm supposed to be using vertical stories and I should be using stories and uh, to addition in vertical formats. But like, you don't have to trust me, you, you have to trust the numbers and, and those numbers are uh, really big and I think that's uh, important to, to share them, important to analyze them a little bit and to understand uh, how, how, you know, the trend, because the trend is uh, very clear in it. So as you can guys see, uh, Facebook out of 1.6 billion active users, because you know, Facebook has almost 3 billion of registered accounts, but let's say 1.6 billion is active users, 500 uh, million uh, create and watch stories, uh, vertical stories uh, every single day. Uh, Instagram is a little bit similar, 500 million of people, uh, of 1 billion active users every, every day. And uh, TikTok is 800 million active users uh, and uh, creating over 2 billion of views every single day. And I wanted to uh, point out that when I was doing this presentation in November in Budapest, the number uh, for TikTok was 500 million. So the growth uh, over five months is 300 million uh, daily active users. So for anybody who is asking me if they should join TikTok, yes, you should, because uh, 300 million of people join over the five past months. Uh, so it's definitely the time and of course there is a snapchat and many people uh, don't want to use it in their uh, social media for organizations or companies because of course it's not linkable it's not uh, researchable but it's as well a very useful tool uh, depending what what kind of results you are trying to achieve and there is 218 million active users but they create 300 billions of snaps which is pretty crazy in my opinion but let's talk a little bit about some kind of average user because this is as well very important to understand. Uh, of course, we are all having some kind of uh, groups which we are trying to reach and uh, uh, it would be uh, good to understand if the given social media has a, has a group which we are trying to reach or planning to reach. So uh, Facebook, as you, can, as you can see, generally young people use uh, use all kinds of social media, but much more TikTok and Snapchat than um, Facebook and Instagram. Uh, Facebook is 65% uh, of, uh, of users are under the age of 35, Instagram 71, uh, TikTok is 41, but of users of 16 to 24, but older users are growing really a lot in the app and uh, there is lots of lots of famous accounts with uh, from uh, from boomer, from boomers from uh, from people from people from grandparents from parents and uh, it's a very good trend uh, it it shows that it's not only um, young kids which are using this uh, tiktok those days and snapchat as well is 83 percent of users under 35 and uh, you can see some uh, daily usage per minute. Oh, it's not really far away. Um, they are all very close to each other. And of course, about mobile use. Uh, I always put this mobile use because it's important because you have to create a dedicated content for the platform. And if uh, 96 or 100% people using uh, uh, and consuming the platform on the mobile phone, then uh, vertical would be a good idea in my opinion. So, uh, of course, it's not enough to use vertical stories. Content is still a king and always will be. So we have to be creative and we have to, uh, you know, have strategies what we will be doing with the content which we are creating. It's not enough to open an account and just uh, uh, post some funny memes, yeah? Uh, and speaking about content, it's... Um, for me, it's very important for everyone to understand that if you want to be, if, if you are responsible for social media uh, in your organization or in your company or even for your personal social media, you have to understand what kind of content you create for what kind of purpose. Uh, because there are different kinds of content for different kinds of outcomes, you know. And as you can see, I divide them in three groups. In dedicated, which you create purely 
for engagement on different social, uh, social media platform, uh, branded, which of course every single content should be, every single content you create should be branded because uh, you know everyone should be able to easily recognize that this is a content coming from your uh, platform. Uh, it's of course uh, the main purpose of it is marketing and promotional which you create for traffic which you want to uh, drive to either your website or a cause or any petition people will be signing or anything you will be doing. Uh, and we will talk a little bit about different kind of uh, uh, about about some content made right okay so we will start from dedicated uh, this is in my opinion the most important thing uh, if you if you if we are talking about social media platforms uh, in my opinion companies make a big mistake because uh, there is somebody who is coming to your social media team and telling oh i want results i want viral videos i want 1 million of views uh, and i want uh, you know go crazy and everyone to talk about me. Yeah, this is great. Everyone wants that. <laughs> but it's not attainable every single, uh, every single video you create or every single story you post. And lowering this expectation actually makes your work easier and, uh, and maybe your stress level as a person who works in social media uh, lower. So dedicated is a content which you create for a given platform. And even if you want to create the content with the same message, you still have to, uh, you know, change it and you have to change the form, change the, um, you, you have to, you, you have to uh, choose a right form for the given platform we are talking about. And as I told you that, yes, majority of examples will be from uh, coronavirus because this is the biggest trend of all on social media uh, happening those days. And it's really important that we create it uh, correctly. So vertical, a quick, um, you know, uh, TikTok, let's say, because those two examples are from TikTok, it's either 15 seconds or one minute, depending how long is your, uh, how long is your message and what you're trying to convey. Um, this is a great example here. The first one, I will um, put it on in a second. It's a, a World uh, uh, Health Organization. It's uh, very amazing because they just joined TikTok a couple of days ago, exactly like I think like it happened five days ago or seven days ago. And they only created 14, um, 14 TikToks. They are telling, uh, they, they said that they joined uh, TikTok especially because of the coronavirus and because of the message they want to spread and because of you know how they want young young people and people who are using this platform in those huge numbers to get information every single day and they started from there this are several measures you can adopt to protect yourself and others from getting the new coronavirus frequently clean your hands using an alcohol-based hand rub product like a gel or wash your hands with soap and water when coughing and sneezing cover your mouth and nose with elbow like this or use a tissue if you use a tissue discard it immediately into a closed bin avoid close contact with anyone that has fever and cough and if you have fever cough and difficulty breathing seek medical care early and share information about any recent travels with your healthcare provider. If you just have mild respiratory symptoms and no specific travel history, carefully follow the precautions I just explained and make sure you stay home until recovery. If you need more information on how to protect yourself from the new coronavirus, check who.int. So as I, as I was saying, this is their first TikTok. It has been seen, I don't know, 35 millions of times so far from, um, I made the note, but those numbers are changing every single day. Uh, so it's crazy because uh, they are uh, on TikTok for seven days. They have uh, more than 600,000 followers and their videos uh, been uh, seen uh, more than 150 million of times uh, in seven days. So I, I am talking about these numbers because I want you guys to understand where the future lies. I know that you know, there is lots of social medias where, uh, where, where there, there is a possibility for vertical storytelling. There is Facebook, there is Snapchat, they are, they are all there, but um, uh, they are not uh, maybe, uh, the, the, the majority of them are kind of dying, I would say, or in the last phase of existing. Uh, why TikTok is something fresh and new, and 
and maybe it's uh, um, something which we have, uh, have to put more effort in as uh, social media people. Uh, so yes, yeah, so they get 155 million of views. And what I wanted to tell you, what is really so amazing about TikTok when it comes to coronavirus is that, it, uh, the, of course, the numbers are huge and we will talk about them later because I have some hashtags uh, for you and everything. But the thing is that TikTok uh, took a very careful uh, move and is promoting uh, those kind of uh, TikToks which are coming from very respectable organizations. So when you search coronavirus or when you search coronavirus challenge or whatever, those are the first videos which you see. Uh, and they are asking uh, the users to be responsible in creating content about this kind of subject. So another one is uh, Red Cross. Let's see. In disease outbreaks, facts, not fear, help people protect themselves and their loved ones. We need solidarity, not stigma, to support communities and people affected by COVID-19. Fear and mistrust can increase the spread of disease and hamper the efforts to stop it. It's important to correct misconceptions and at the same time understand that people's feelings are real. Misconceptions, rumors, misinformation often contribute to stigmatization and discrimination. Fear is never an excuse for racism or hate. If you have questions or comments, leave them below. We answer, we answer all of them. Um, I think it's really good uh, that uh, lots of organizations uh, are having a very smart approach uh, in conveying the message they want. They not, from what I notice, uh, observing TikTok and Instagram as well and Snapchat as well, they're really all trying to be super responsible. And I think that's the way how we're supposed to be about every single subject, but especially maybe about uh, such an important one. So, uh, so that was a dedicated content. As you can see, it's created for a platform. Uh, it's, it's short. It's, it, it's conveyed the message they want to convey. And then they move on. Dedicated and branded. Of course, both of those organizations, uh, lots of those organizations like UNICEF and everything, they have a very, uh, lots of people working for them and they have lots of resources and they can allow themselves for having um, all this amazing dedicated and branded content. But I think we are all able to do it with some simple of color, using colors and graphics and it's uh, so easy. So as you can see, uh, World Health Organization, blue, blue is their color. That's how they are working. It's the easiest way to, 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 to do the branded content, I would say. Um, uh, Red Cross, yes. Uh, uh, red. And of course, those are simple videos about, you know, seven steps to, pre to pre prevent the virus, how to wash your hands correctly. This is the main subject all the videos are made about. And because we have very little time, I will uh, skip some of those because I think that challenges are much more interesting to talk about and to understand how TikTok works. So, uh, so, uh, so we will pass it. And content can be, of course, branded. And um, of course, I think every content is dedicated and branded. But really, lots of uh, lots of organizations are doing it very responsibly. And I wanted to maybe give you one little example. And, and another one. Doesn't want to play. So why I'm showing you this content? Uh, because I want to show you that TikTok is not only a place, a social media platform where, uh, you know, young kids are dancing and lip singing. No, there is a plenty of accounts which create a content full of information, full of news. And, um, and so it's not only for fun. It's uh, as well. Uh, it's as well for you know sending your message to the world as the majority of us want to, is trying to do those days, and of course promotional. 
uh, promotional is much easier on Instagram and uh, Facebook than it is on Snapchat and TikTok because Snapchat and TikTok are not linkable as of, as of now. I mean, of course, if you are using ads, then they are, but if you are just creating uh, content, they are not. But Instagram is linkable and you can um, have a swipe up and both of those organizations, uh, uh, World Health Organization and lots of Red Cross and UNICEF and everything, they are having this uh, ver vertical uh, storytelling on Instagram and of course asking for donation or uh, linking to, you know, to instructions of how to properly wash your hands and how to generally use it. But of course they are driving traffic to their website or causes they need to. Uh, hashtags. Um, hashtags are extremely important uh, for all kinds of social media. I mean, of course, on Snapchat, maybe they are not so important because, as I told you, Snapchat is not generally searchable, it's not linkable, and uh, it's just a very, uh, it's very specific microclimate, as I call it. But uh, uh, hashtags are important, and if Somebody tells me they are not. Uh, I always uh, disagree uh, politely and uh, show those numbers. So this is, as you can see, on one side you have TikTok and another side, sorry, because I don't know how you are seeing it. So on one side you have TikTok and another one you have Instagram. Uh, there, Where you have views, it's a TikTok and where you have posts is Instagram. And uh, those are just an example, just an examples. I updated them a couple of days ago and they are still growing on daily basis. As you can see, uh, for example, uh, TikTok on the LGBT uh, hashtag is 9.8 billion of views. When I was uh, giving this presentation in Budapest, it was 4.5 million of views. So it doubled in five months. Uh, so um, while on Instagram, it only grown for 1 million of posts. So the growth is much slower and it's because less and less people use the social media uh, in general, uh, the, the Instagram. And uh, the um, hashtags which are uh, regarding the climate change, they didn't grow so fast, uh, mainly because I think that we are now talking about coronavirus. So those are the hashtags which are growing the fastest on all kinds of social medias, on Facebook, on Instagram, on, uh, on uh, TikTok. And I wanted to show you the magnitude of this um, and um, tell you about a few stuff. So the coronavirus on TikTok, uh, it's 12.1 billion of views. Uh, and we have, uh, um, I think the numbers are huge. It's, uh, it's, all, it's, uh, it's overwhelming how big are the numbers, but maybe it's good. Maybe we need this kind of stuff. Uh, Corona time, which is a funny, uh, funny video. It's almost one uh, million. Uh, it's almost one billion, and it's Corona time as well, almost one billion. While uh, coronavirus on Instagram is a lot, it's 4.7 million of posts, but the problem is that if you go to coronavirus uh, hashtag on Instagram, uh, the majority of those posts are really um, not about Corona, okay? Uh, because Instagram is a social media where people use hashtags which are trending to get more views and uh, but uh, but instagram uh, in my opinion did something very correct so if you go to instagram and you search the hashtag coronavirus before you are able to see the post you are seeing uh, an information that if you are looking for uh, reliable information uh, you should check world health organization website not the posts on instagram and then they're giving you a link and you can get directly go to the website and i think it's amazing how responsible uh, all those social media has been uh, behaving in this uh, very unusual times for all of us so the, the hashtags are huge. I think we should be all, all using them. We should be all using uh, hashtags in our posts. But as I always say, be precise. Yes, don't do what people on Instagram do. Don't use a hashtag only because it's trending and you can get some views uh, from it. Use a specific hashtag which is related to your post, related to the content which you are creating and sharing and related to the problem you are trying to talk about or message you're trying to convey. Um, 
trends and challenges and rules because you know the most important thing on TikTok if you want to understand TikTok and you want to use the TikTok is uh, accept understanding uh, hashtags and importance for using them is as well understanding trends and challenges because TikTok is something TikTok revolutionized social media um, and those trends and challenges is something I would never imagine myself but now I'm thinking like this is a brilliant idea and why haven't we been using this before so uh, generally, trends and challenges uh, is the is the is the way how uh, creators and TikTok operate. Uh, when you go and search a main page uh, on your application, you can uh, search different uh, different challenges, different trends. TikTok is promoting some of them, some of them not, depending you know which is what's the time of the year and what do they want to promote. Uh, and challenges are great ideas because you can, you as a user of, uh, uh, of TikTok or uh, as an organization which wants to um, use TikTok, you can create those. And that would be the way to success, to create trends and create challenges and uh, have lots of people joining them. And then you are set for life on TikTok. It's one, it's enough to have one viral challenge or trend and you will be doing very, very, very well. But how to do trends correctly? Yes, this is the most important question. It, there is no, um, you know, I'm, I'm saying there is not one recipe for success because I think, of course, creativity is the most important thing which you can, which, which you can use. So let's be honest. Now, the most trending hashtag on, on uh, the, the most uh, trending challenge uh, on uh, on uh, TikTok and maybe on other social medias is uh, coronavirus challenge. Um, as you can see, there is a number of 522 million of views to this challenge. It already grown because this number is from yesterday and today I checked the numbers while I was waiting for all of you to join and it's already 600 uh, millions. So uh, let's talk about this, that there is lots of countries, lots of organizations which are creating their own content and trying to do something right and, you know, distribute authentic information about coronavirus and what to do with it. And so did the Vietnamese uh, um, government, which created a song about coronavirus and about washing hands correctly. And this song, this, this song was put on all kind of media, mainly on television in Vietnam. And of course, kiddos, kiddos young creative people in Vietnam, they took the song uh, and they created a very first original um, TikTok, which broke, which broke, uh, this TikTok broke TikTok. Oh, in Vietnam and in Asia. Oh, look. Yeah, now you all know how to correctly <laughs> wash your hands, yeah, and uh, to the nice music, of course. So it went so crazy. Uh, this TikTok went so viral, and everybody started to use this sound, and everyone started to use. And look at this, UNICEF. I've seen, you know, a great opportunity in it, and uh, asked asked politely to to have their own TikTok, to, 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 to maybe uh, use this fame of this guy and of this, uh, and how successful this uh, particular TikTok was to convey the message which they are trying to convey.
And this is a great example of uh, something else. If you cannot create the challenge, you have to really quickly join the challenge. As soon as it shows up on TikTok, you should be joining the challenge. Just to, you know, applying it, uh, uh, adjusting it to your own uh, message which you are trying to convey or, you, you know, your own style which you, are, you, you, you will have on TikTok on which you decide. Of course, there is a safe hand challenge because they are all this kind of challenge, those, uh, challenges those days. And as you can see, uh, more than almost 800 millions uh, in just a couple of days. And uh, yet again here, uh, you know, there is lots of organizations, as I told you, they didn't invent um, the, the, the challenge, but they are joining it, yeah? And it's doing very well for them because the views are huge. And of course, there is a new, a celebrity on TikTok. It's a hamster. And yeah, the ham starts. He is teaching, you know, people how to properly behave during the corona time. But, uh, 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 you know, the notes are like this. It's not only like, okay, sorry, because I'm getting lost a little bit here because I want to tell you too many things in once because I think the time is passing really quickly. Uh, so, it's not only English language, okay? So there is lots of, lots of, lots of... The, the whole uh, the whole world, uh, all languages you can use. There is the, the, the TikTok is so strong in all over the world that it's crazy. And uh, as I'm saying that uh, you, if you cannot create the challenge, just join it as fast as you can. Way of using it uh, uh, for your own uh, uh, growth on social media. Of course, uh, people uh, users of TikTok are very creative uh, creative users, and uh, I wanted to show you some funny things which people do because life at home is a challenge as well with <laughs> more than 1.5 billion of views uh, as, as of today. And uh, oh, of course, lots of famous people, lots of celebrities, but all, as well, lots of normal users are trying to do some funny stuff in a crazy time. Yeah, yeah. just just on my last roll of toilet paper here, and I found out that there's this, this cool hack you can do. If you put it right onto the lens and pull back, there's an extra roll for you. All right, hope you guys are doing okay. Stay safe. So I think that, you know, of course, people, we are trying to stay, you know, positive in, in crazy times. And as you can see, uh, people on TikTok as well. Yeah. So uh, I, I was impressed with uh, how, when I was researching a lot, some, some, some videos uh, for this presentation, how positive people are and uh, how, you know, uh, positive and to stay, but as well, you know, we're full, we're full on information without... Uh, spreading some fake news, as, uh, as we say. And I wanted to tell you that every challenge is, it's, it's possible to make every challenge right, okay? Because some, some people always tell me, no, Maria, this challenge is not for me because this is some kids dancing on the street in Vietnam and how can I do, use this challenge for myself? Every single, in my opinion, every single challenge is adjustable and uh, to your cause, okay? So uh, let, let's talk about this. There, there is this trend on, uh, there is this challenge and trend on uh, TikTok those days, which is called paper towel challenge. Okay, and it's this little trick which you write a message uh, on a first layer and then on a second layer you write another message and when you put it in the water, it magically appears, okay? And people have been using this trend for, for everything, for asking other people to marry them, for, uh, you know, telling some funny things to their parents or, 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 or other people. And here is, uh, of course, Washington Post because they do TikTok amazingly. They are doing, doing this very well, doing this. The child. 
and another I'm one. Gonna play another day, please. It's a nightfall, that was the American Red Cross. So as you can see, like in my opinion, every single challenge can be, can be done uh, for your message, okay? You just, have to, you just have to think a little bit about it and have some funny ideas. So, uh, I mean, it's, it's a challenge, let's say. It's another challenge or another trend. It's more of a trend than a challenge. It's a, a trend that is this song, which is called Beach Balls, and there is this video, and everyone been using it in a very particular way that, oh, I'm coming to the dinner undressed, and this is how my family is coming, yeah? And of course, it's, I mean, you know, it's funny and it has nothing to do with, with being serious. Uh, it's just a dedicated content just for a platform for engagement and everything. But of course, there has been somebody creative which adjusted it to our current situation. <laughs> So yes, so uh, in my opinion, just let's let's be creative and let's 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 go crazy on TikTok, yeah. Uh, technicalities. This is uh, something which we which I have to mention because we are just running out of time. But uh, I will mention this, guys. Right. It's not so difficult as it seems. It, all of these things are done in the application. Even even if you haven't used TikTok before, this is no special effects, no special abilities to create to to to, to do some crazy stuff on your computer. It's all built in TikTok tools. Of course, you can use some application. I'm not telling you not to. You know, uh, I'm just telling you that uh, it's enough of couple of days of playing with the application by yourself, and you will be able to perform all those tricks. And if not, you know, then. Then, then I have an advice for you. This is kind of stay on for hours. And you think to yourself, I can make one of those videos. Let me find a tutorial. Uh, so yeah, so as I said, if, we, if you don't know how to do it, I am sure you can research it. There is a million of YouTube tutorials already how to do great TikToks. You can ask me uh, if, if you want. Uh, I will give you, you have my details. You can always contact me on social media or on my email. And um, I don't know, Maya, I think I managed the time. No, because, uh, sorry, but it was you, so little. You managed, you managed beautifully with the technical difficulties. We, we still, there, it's, uh, we still exactly. have 30 minutes. I'm so minutes. sorry for this. I didn't know you cannot hear because, you know, we were talking about uh, before and I, I was 100% sure you could hear everything. So, yeah, okay, no, we have, uh, we have actually a question from, uh, from Lukasz. Which yeah, of course. Actually, a couple of questions. Um, so okay. maybe we should go, but I think they're really important for people who have not used uh, TikTok before. So maybe we can yes. go one by one. Um, and Lukasz says, uh, I do not know how TikTok networking works. If we decide to go on TikTok as an organization, as a new channel, what would be our potential reach? That's the first one. I don't know okay. if you want to take them one by one. How does yeah, it... let's take them one by one, maybe, okay? okay? Yeah. Because potential reach. It, yeah. Okay, so as you can see, the potential reach is huge, okay, guys? Because, of course, I am not, I am not able to guarantee you that you will create a, a TikTok, first TikTok, and you will get one billion of views. But it happens a lot, okay? So, it, 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 in, because there is, you know, we know very little about algorithms in general when it comes to social media, but much more, much more about Facebook or Instagram because you have, we have been using it for years and we have been observing it and researching and doing different tests. On, um, on, t on TikTok, it's much harder, uh, as I told you, because it's new, we don't have that much data. But look at this. If you are creating a post on Instagram those days, yes? And like me, for example, you have 100,000 uh, followers, yes? Your post is visible, if it's visible to 500, uh, to 5,000 people, it's a huge success. It's like a huge success. Because, um, you know, the algorithm of Instagram is really, really tough those days. But while you are creating TikToks, you know, I see young accounts opening TikToks and having 60, 70, 80,000 of views per TikTok. 
I cannot guarantee that to, to you. And I cannot guarantee that if one TikTok will be so successful, another one will be as well. Of course, it's a, it's a method of trials. You know, we all have to, you know, try and see for ourselves what works for, uh, what works for us, uh, for our audience, yeah? Yeah, but this is actually connected to the second one. Uh, okay. Because Lukas asks, how does a new channel build its audience? Is it like on Facebook that you have to invite people you know and we build it slowly from there or some other way? So, of course, you have to use both methods. Uh, as of now, uh, because uh, this is something which I maybe forgot to mention when we were talking. Generally, you know, every single social media has a three phases, okay, of, 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 of people joining. And then there is a first phase when only, uh, let's, let, let's say it like in, uh, people, trendsetters join, yeah? So it's people who sense the trends and there's not necessarily celebrities, okay? Just generally people who are fast with uh, adapting new, new technologies and new social media platforms. Then there is a second phase where celebrities are joining. And uh, we have, when, we, when I was giving the speech in November in Budapest, we have been in the second stage when it comes to TikTok. There were celebrities joining, you know, like Will Smith and Mariah Carey and Ellen and Oprah and everybody who, you know, who is huge. And of course, these people, they, they gain followers in like one day, yes, because they, they're generally famous. And we are now in a third phase where everybody is joining TikTok. But it's still very good. We are st this phase is still amazing for joining t TikTok, and naturally you will grow a lot of followers. But of course, you have to use and try to use your other social media platforms uh, to to inform people that you have TikTok as well. Great. Um, and uh, or we can. Uh, oh yeah, this is actually a follow up to this is related to Lukasz's question. But uh, so is it we build it slowly from there, or we can advertise and our videos will be viewed by strangers? I guess the question is that how if you you said that you, you should promote your TikTok via your other uh, social media channels, but if you're just on TikTok, like yes. does it happen organically that people yes. thanks to your use of it hashtags does. and a good it's, content? I mean, of course you you you're supposed to use a hashtag or two because you know even if you do make a challenge, you want to appear in this uh, challenge hashtag, so you better use the you use the the, the actual uh, hashtag as I told you, and uh, most probably it will have uh, influence on where you will be shown on on uh, on TikTok. Yes, uh, algorithm will decide in which kind of a challenge uh, they should show your video, but generally you will still get a lot of a lot of organic growth okay uh, it, it, it's like beginning of Instagram you know like when I was joining Instagram uh, especially here in Poland you could grow uh, you, you could grow so fast it was it, it was unbelievable and this is the stage of which we are in TikTok now now on growing on Instagram if I so, would have to be honest with you it's close to impossible okay and uh, and TikTok is in the early phases uh, of users so uh, the organic growth is really real and not uh, influenced by uh, algorithms so much yet mm -hmm. uh, Sophia is asking a non TikTok question <laughs> of how, course, to, no problem. how to increase the number of views on Instagram and Facebook except from hashtags Oh, so you just, uh, the, you know, you are talking about this, uh, so you just, you just uh, go to search option and you search, search the hashtag or uh, subject you are interested in and the numbers are given over there. No, 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 but she's asking except for hashtags. So apart, so you use hashtags, that's fine, but are there any other options to increase your output? Uh, um... Part. Of views. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Uh, but you know, on Instagram, it's really hard because uh, you know, used to it has been organic, and those days it's all purely algorithm, and majority of people which see your posts are, has to be your followers, and except of hashtags, you cannot do anything else. Okay. I know it's sad, but yeah. I mean, of course you can promote, I'm sorry, you can promote, okay, you can pay for advertising on Instagram, but I don't really think that you know, we all want to do it and maybe not, we, we not all have funds for it, you know. If you have funds, you can try it. But as from my, uh, uh, from my research, it's not really that amazing even if you pay for advertising on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Great. Does anyone have any other questions? Things you'd like to know? This is the time to ask them. Oh, Anna is asking, who to follow on TikTok now? Ooh, oh my God, there is so many accounts, Anna, you know, I would have to make a list, yes? Um, depending what you are looking for. <laughs> 
I mean, I would follow a hamster, of course. Yeah, the hamster, he's very funny. He does a lot of uh, educational videos. Uh, no, I mean, no, don't do this. You shouldn't be following uh, uh, other uh, um, accounts which other people follow. Um, uh, for algorithm, okay, it's the best to follow accounts which you are interested in, which are close to what you are doing and which are bringing some value to you because this is the the easiest way for for the algorithm as well you know if you are creating accounts which you are really interested in mm -hmm. so whatever it is yeah i am follow i, I myself follow a lot of uh, oh who i follow let me let me check my <laughs> i follow i follow mainly some uh, funny people you know I don't follow much of dancers and singers. I just follow all these people with rant, you know. <laughs> mm. um, but maybe Maisha, maybe a question because I'm. I don't want to assume, but I feel like uh, not a lot of us, uh, meaning us NGOs and organizations, are on TikTok uh, yet. Yep. Um, but so, what would be from your perspective? Because I guess the hardest step is the first one. Apart from the uh, an advice that yeah we should all make a viral challenge which yeah. is easy, easy enough but in, from your experience like what would be the first step how do you how would you you're an NGO a like mid sized NGO from Poland or from uh, Slovakia or from Czech Republic yeah, no problem. how do you do it so I gave this kind of presentation uh, to the um, Pride Parade in Warsaw and they are you know, super young people which understand social media much, much better than me, eh, in my opinion. And uh, what I told them is very simple. Of course, open TikTok, yes, create an account, yes, and do research first, okay? And uh, do a research of what kind of uh, uh, tweets and uh, what kind of TikToks and challenges are cr already created in your, uh, you know, in your area, yeah, in your subject or whatever you want to approach. Then strategize with your team. The most important thing is to strategize with your team and choose, uh, first of all, your whole team should be involved in creating TikToks. You cannot just leave it to one person and, uh, uh, and tell them, oh, TikTok is for you, you do TikToks, okay? No, uh, it has to be a collaboration because that works the best for majority of organizations. Even like uh, what I, there was one example of Washington Post, you know, and they involve every single person working in the office in creating TikToks. Of course, there are two main people which come up with ideas and creative, uh, creative uh, videos, but they, they they involve everyone and you should involve everyone and another thing is you should be choosing somebody who is really passionate about social media okay because i think that most majority of organizations are making a mistake you know there is an annual meeting and uh, you are trying to uh, divide the responsibilities uh, for 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 upcoming year and uh, it comes to this that okay so who wants to make social media and maybe nobody wants to do this you know and then you say, okay, so Maria will be doing the social media. And Maria maybe is not very excited about doing social media. So it's not the best person to choose to, 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 to uptake on the subject, yeah? uh, uh, this task, sorry. So choose someone who is passionate about social media, even if they are not uh, technically very good with it on the beginning, okay? Just use somebody who really wants to do it. This is very important, in my opinion. And strategize and have an actual plan like a little business plan for your social media. What you are trying to achieve, what is your goal, and how are you gonna achieve it? Like, like, um, like even have a scheduling plan. Like, um, you know, how, uh, think about it, because you cannot, uh, 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 you know, it's easy to talk about it. Oh, let's do one Facebook, one Instagram, one TikTok, and one Twitter every single day, you know? Uh, but it's really hard. You, it's, it, making one, uh, uh, one post on every single social media platform you want to get involved with is really, really hard. And it will be great for a week or for two or for three, but after a while, it's, it, it's too much, you know? So you have to strategize how many TikToks we are able to do every week, how many Twitters we are able to do. Are we able to schedule upfront, you know, a lot of, uh, lot of subjects? It's, I know it sounds really boring, 
you know, and I know everyone thinks that social media is so much easier and comes naturally to, every, to everybody, but believe me, the people who uh, social media comes naturally to is very little and they are very lucky, but majority of us, it doesn't work like that. And you, you have to take it as a normal, you know, obligation of organization, you know, yet another task which you really have to strategize for. Yeah, I I wouldn't say everybody thinks social media is easy. I would say no. Like, I don't know because it's, you know I usually work with people who know a lot about social media, yeah. so they are always like, oh, you know, it's easy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay, everyone. So because it's uh, it's two o'clock on the on the dot. Um, I don't see any more questions. Uh, so I would like to thank you all for coming. Thank Marisha for uh, conducting our webinar. Um, and uh, just to let you know that you will be will be putting up the recording um, up on the YouTube channel uh, and so if you didn't get to see the, all of it or you want to share it with someone else uh, you'll receive the link and then email that will follow up it might, uh, I can share as well the presentation you know great yeah we'll, 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 we'll put the link to the presentation of as course, well yeah. Um, so thank you again for coming. Um, uh, please join us uh, for the last uh, uh, installment of the series in two weeks. Um, and obviously, please uh, stay healthy and uh, sane uh, and calm and see you in uh, two weeks. Bye bye, everyone. See you. Bye bye.